Hello there. Glad to have you with us today for this special show on United States Army Vietnam Veterans Combat and Skill Badges. Plus, we've got a little something extra. We're going to take a look at the Army of the Republic of Vietnam badges that the Vietnam veterans may have earned. There's a little something extra, so let's go. Hey, glad to have you back with us today on this special show about United States Army Vietnam Veterans Combat and Skill Badges. I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain South Carolina for providing all of the badges and insignia. And of course, Medals of America Press, where we get all of our information like uh, the new book, United States Army Badges, Medals and Insignia, or the new book on the Republic of Vietnam, Medals and Badges and Insignia, along with her allies. And uh, of course, Peter Morgan's fabulous patch book, Military Patches. So uh, I guess I ought to say special thanks to Top for loaning us his uniform. So that gives us an overview of what we're talking about, the skill and combat badges that our veterans wore home. For example, skill badges like the expert rifle badge, marksman's badge, and the sharpshooter's badge, the master parachutist badge, um, master blaster, top of the parachute skill badges. Combat badges like the Combat Infantryman's Badge, the CIB, the most esteemed badge in the world. Uh, the Brits and the French may say different, but the truth of it is, it is the most esteemed combat badge in the world. And the Republic of Vietnam Parachute Badge is an example of some of the Arvin badges that we're going to look at that our veterans earned in, for service in Vietnam. So let's go take a look in a little more detail. I'll try to lay it all out for you. <laughs> the first skill badges a soldier earns are his marksmanship badges. It could be a marksman as shown with a rifle bar, or in this case, marksman with carbine, auto rifle, and flamethrower. You don't see that one very often. I think that may be a World War II one. And a sharpshooter, expert rifleman, and expert rifleman with a uh, two bars underneath. As you can see in this example, the top two badges are the Expert Marksman Qualification Badges. In World War II, they were originally made in sterling silver, but today it's a white metal with silver, nickel, and rhodium. It's a cross with the representation of a target placed on the center and enclosed by a wreath of laurel leaves tied at the bottom with a knot. It has two rings at the bottom for attaching a bar, naming the weapon for which the recipient qualified. The next one is the Sharpshooter's Qualification Badge, and it is basically the same badge without the laurel wreath. And then the bottom right-hand badge is the Marksman's Badge, which is just the cross. Now, the Weapons Qualification Bars have rings at the top for attaching to the Expert, Sharpshooter, and Marksman Qualification Badge or the last previously earned bar, so you can have multiple bars underneath the uh, Expert, Sharpshooter, and Marksman Qualification Badge. There are almost 20 bars, as you can see here. This artilleryman who served with the 2nd Army Division proudly displays his awards for combat service to include the skill badges for being an expert rifleman and a sharpshooter with the pistol. Another well-earned badge was the Driver and Mechanics Badge that came with six different clasps. It's an oxidized silver cross with a disc wheel and a tire placed in the center, and at the bottom of the cross are two rings for attaching the qualification bars. Here's a nice example by a retired first sergeant who saw service in both Vietnam and Desert Storm because he's displayed his driver's badge along with his expert rifleman, sharpshooter, and marksman badges at the bottom of his display. Another badge that earned a lot of respect was the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Badge or the EOD badge. It's a silver badge, one and three quarter inches in height, and consists of a shield charged with a conventional drop bomb point down from which radiates four lightning flashes, all in, all in front of and contained within a reef of laurel leaves. The senior explosive ordnance disposal badge is the same as a basic badge, except the drop bomb bears a 732nd inch silver star. And the Master Explosive Ordnance Disposal Badge is the same as the Senior except the star is surrounded by a laurel wreath. 
which is added above the shield. Just to earn the basic explosive ordnance disposal badge requires over 18 months on the job with approval by the commanding officer. One of the most important skill badges were those for the elite troops, the airborne troops, the parachutists, the paratroopers. It was a basic parachute badge, the senior parachute badge, and the master parachutist, uh, master blaster we used to call them. And for each combat jump, a bronze star was asserted, inserted into the parachute badge. For the uh, air mobile, not issued until 1974, not a part of the Vietnam guys. Parachute rigor, I'll speak to that in some detail. And many of the Vietnam veterans receive the Army of Republic of Vietnam parachute badge, shown here as a metal badge, and then shown here is a cloth badge. Uh, here's one in uh, black on OD. And then occasionally and rarely a Vietnam veteran will have something like this, very rare, um, Arvin 1st Airborne Unit, unit insignia. For active duty Arvin paratroopers, this was the insignia worn on the uh, lower right, uh, lower left hand pocket. And this was the Arvin Parachute insignia, our 1st Airborne Division patch. Uh, is another version of the active duty airborne patch. And so these things, if uh, a U.S. Army veteran received it, it would be very appropriate to put into his display case. To my knowledge, there was only one combat jump in Vietnam, and that was by the 173rd Airborne Brigade. And so Top's uh, Master Blaster badge would have one bronze star inserted into the middle of the parachute. Another important skill badge was a parachute rigor badge, which is a silver wing canopy with a band centered on the badge inscribed rigor and the winged parachute represents the functions of rigging of supplies for airdrops as well as packing and repair of parachutes used for personnel and cargo. <laughs> Riggers were very important to all the jumpers. Skill badge that you don't see very often is the highly coveted Pathfinder badge which is a gold colored metal and enamel badge consisting of a gold sinister wing displayed on and over a gold torch with red and gray flames. It is awarded by the uh, Commandant of the U.S. Infantry School for successfully completing the Pathfinder's course. One very highly admired skill badge in Vietnam was the Army Aviator's Badge, and shown here is a basic badge, and underneath it is a, an example of a Master Aviator's Badge, and below that it is an example of an Air Crewman's, or your door gunners, or helicopter crewman, and just for interest, occasionally an aviator might be presented the Vietnamese Air Force Wings. The Army Aviator's Badge is an oxidized silver badge consisting of a shield of the coat of arms of the United States on and over a pair of display wings. A star is added above the shield to indicate qualification as a senior Army Aviator, which requires 1,500 hours and a star surrounded by a laurel reef indicates the qualification as a master army aviator, which requires over 3,000 hours. This army warrant officer proudly displays his master aviator wings over his airborne wings, his ribbons and unit awards, as well as his expert rifleman and sharpshooter pistol qualification badge. A <laughs> neat, neat case. One skill badge you might not see very often but was critical was the Flight Surgeon's Badge. And here's an example of the Flight Surgeon Wing, Senior Flight Surgeon, and Master Flight Surgeon. And the wings suggest flight and reflect the skills associated with aerial flight, while the medical staff is traditional and historically associated with healing and medical skills. Another skill badge Vietnam veterans will recognize is the Aircraft Crew Members Badge, and it's a, a silver oxidized badge bearing the coat of arms of the United States over a pair of displayed wings. The badge is the same design as that for the Army Aviator with the coat of arms of the United States substituted for the shield of the coat of arms of the United States. The wings suggest flight and reflect the skills associated with aerial flight. And the coat of arms of the United States on the shield signifies loyalty and devotion to duty. 
and these wings were hard earned in Vietnam. This specialist fourth class who served with the Army's 1st Aviation Brigade displays his Army aircrew wings over his ribbons as well as his medals. And if you look closely down at the bottom, you'll see that his qualification as an expert is with the machine gun and with the rifle was a marksman. So I don't doubt that he was manning the machine gun on the side of his helicopter. Special Forces, a la John Wayne. Uh, you can't miss the tab, of course, which is a uh, skill insignia because it indicates that you have qualified for the Special Forces. In addition to the parachute badges that a normal Special Forces uh, enlisted man or an officer would have, they would also have the opportunity to be qualified with the Vietnamese Special Forces parachute badges. And I've shown examples here of the basic Vietnamese Special Forces Parachute Badge, the Senior Vietnamese Parachute Badge, and the Master Vietnamese Parachute Badge. Uh, another insignia, which you really don't have a skill badge or a combat badge to reflect, would be something like a Mike Force um, patch. And I think if you were working with the Mike Forces, you would probably want to use that in your display case. And they also had a sort of breast insignia. This is the PRU, the Vietnamese Provincial Reconnaissance Unit, and uh, these were underneath the Special Forces supervision. And then occasionally, two Vietnam veterans would receive parachute wings for someone like, um, well, in this case, Thailand, and there were some from Laos and uh, Cambodia. And they all sort of followed the French versions, and the French have a lot of different parachute badges, but uh, most Vietnam veterans would not have a French parachute badge. Now, occasionally, you would also see um, a unit patch from like the Vietnamese 7th Division that a veteran might want to use. I need to briefly mention two skill badges that Vietnam veterans would have earned prior to arrival in Vietnam, such as the Expert Infantry Badge and the Combat Medical Badge. But what we're going to talk to is the combat versions of those. With the Ranger tab, which is a skill badge, and because it can be in both cloth to go on the shoulder and it can be a metal insignia to be worn with a full dress or mess dress uniform. It was also the Arvin, and I'll show you an example of it here. This is the Arvin Ranger Qualification Badge, and a number of MACV veterans might have received this, and this shows you an example that was on the uh, combat uniform. This was the beret badge for the Arvin Rangers. And then there were some combat badges also from the Army of Republic of Vietnam for armor officers. The most prestigious of all the combat badges is preceded by a skill badge of the expert infantryman's badge, which is a very difficult and very challenging badge to earn. And then there is a combat infantryman's badge, and it comes in several different versions, depending on how many times it's been awarded, one, two, or three. There's not many people who've earned it three times, and I'll show you those examples. Uh, this shows an engineer novelty combat badge. So these novelty badges were made up for armor, artillery, and engineers, but they were not official. Now, well, some guys put them in if they saw a lot of combat, and, well, who's to say no 50 years later? The Combat Medics Badge, it can be first earned as an Expert Medical Badge, and then it be the Combat Medical Badge, and it can be awarded in three different levels, and I'll cover that. Here is a classic military shadow box display of a Special Forces veteran. Starting in the upper left-hand corner is his skill badge of being a Ranger. In the center is his Combat Badge, his CIB. Underneath that is a Senior Airborne or Senior Parachutist Badge. In the lower left-hand corner is a Pathfinder Badge. At the very bottom of the display case is the Army of the Republic of Vietnam Ranger Badge. And on the right-hand bottom side is the South Vietnamese Special Forces Parachute Badge. An incredible display of both combat, skill, and foreign awards. The Combat Infantryman's Badge is a silver and enamel badge, one inch in height and three inches in width, 
which consists of an infantry musket on a light blue bar with a silver border and an over an elliptical oak reef around it. Stars are added at the top of the reef to indicate subsequent awards, one star for the second award, two stars for the third award, and three stars for the fourth award. The musket shown is adapted from the infantry insignia of the infantry branch, and it represents the first official shoulder arms, the 1795 model Springfield Arsenal musket. The award is to personnel in the grade of colonel or below with an infantry MOS who satisfactorily performed duty while assigned as a member of an infantry unit, brigade, or smaller. And only one award is authorized for service in Vietnam, Laos, Dominican Republic, or Korea. This infantry captain, formerly assigned to MACV and 101st Airborne, proudly displays his combat infantry badge above his parachute badge, his unit awards, and his personal medals. The ever most prestigious combat badge is the Combat Medical Badge, which is an oxidized silver badge, one inch in height and inch and a half wide, and it consists of a stretcher crossed by a caduce surrounded at the top by a Greek cross all on and over an elliptical oak reef. Stars are added to indicate subsequent awards, one star at the top for the second award, one star at the top and one at the bottom for the third award, and one star at the top and one at each side for the fourth award. It's awarded to members of the Army Medical Service who are attached to a medical unit of company or smaller size, organic to an infantry unit during any period that the infantry unit was engaged in active ground combat. There's only one award authorized for service in Vietnam and Laos. This Army combat medic of the 9th Infantry Division, the Old Reliables, proudly displays his combat medical badge above his medals and his other insignia. Really a handsome case. I'll briefly mention the Army's diver badge, but I've never met anyone who had one in Vietnam, but I'm sure someone did. And the last badge I'd like to mention is the Overseas Service Bars because during the Vietnam War, the Overseas Service Bar was worn on the lower right-hand sleeve. Today, an Overseas Service Bar is awarded for each six months overseas in a combat zone. So soldiers can be awarded multiple Overseas Service Bars for several years spent in an overseas combat zone. This Signal Corps captain who served in the 4th Infantry Division in MACV shows his combat overseas bars in the lower left-hand corner, and the three bars indicate that he spent at least 18 months in Vietnam. The combat and skill badges go a long way to help tell the story of a Vietnam veteran's service. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today for our special show on United States Army Vietnam Veterans Combat and Skill Badges. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please give us a like, and uh, more especially, we can always use a subscribe. It helps a lot. So, see you next time. Look forward to it. Press two, press two, press two.